Hey. Wow, isn't that beautiful worship today? Let's give God a big hand first. Wow, just stunningly beautiful. And let's give the team a big hand there. Beautiful. I knew that last song, but that song before, is that, is that, did you just write that? Done it before? Oh, okay, well, it was awesome. God is our champion. I love that. That word champion just, whoa, what a touch of God on that word and the sound of it. You know, it's all about a word and a sound, eh? And uh, how beautiful is that? And uh, well, we're so blessed to be here in God's house. And, and I know that, you know, I love it, you know, speak Jesus over our families, Jesus in our city. Speak Jesus into the darkness, you know? How beautiful is that, you know? It's His name that every knee must bow, and it's to His name every tongue shall confess. You know, when I, I know in those verses, and you know, it makes me, Lord, I wanna help me and help us and lead us and use us to help people to bow the knee today when it's still possible. Because God will never push past anyone's personal choice, but He'll give them the choice. And the instrument for bringing choice is you and I, as an individual, as a family, and as the church family, as the God's army of people to bring people to Christ. Oh, I love that name, Jesus, man. The name above every name, the name by which men, women, families, only that name by which we can be saved. Never has the world and the whole history of it ever heard such a, given name, such a powerful name. It's the only name that is able to bring deep peace and deep transformation. It's the only name that can heal us and restore us. No one else came doing like what Jesus did. No one came moving and doing and speaking. No one came anywhere near Jesus. But He came and He came for you and I. He came for us so that we could be saved and planted in this beautiful house to have what we've got going on here and to reach so many more that they can have it as well. How beautiful, man. We just had a beautiful uh, uh, Man Up breakfast yesterday, men's breakfast hosted by Man Up. Let's give a big shout out to all those who helped make that happen and came along. And uh, I think it was just under 120 or so people, or men. And you know, that's, that's our biggest men's breakfast I think we've ever had. And uh, that was just wonderful, man, just wonderful. And I know they're going to get bigger and brighter. And, and uh, we've got another one uh, coming up. I think it's in November. And so keep an eye out for that. And as we just keep moving that momentum, you know, if we save men, heal men, transform men, it filters down into families. And society is changed. For me, it can't happen fast enough. Amen. Just can't happen fast enough. So help us, Lord. Help us. But hey, please be seated. Say hi to your neighbor. Tell them they're looking amazing. <laughs> what a cool place to come to and be told you're amazing, eh? Look at that. You're amazing. Woo! Beautiful. You don't get that just anywhere, eh? <laughs> or if you do, it's because there's a, a string attached to it. <laughs> but, um,. Beautiful. I want to talk this morning uh, about being uh, that God chose you and appointed you, chose you and appointed you. And you got a Bible, you can turn it to John chapter 15, verse 16. And hi to those watching this online. Uh, great to have you with us and pray you'll also be really blessed. So it says here in John 15, verse 16, wonderful verse. Jesus says this, you did not choose me. <laughs> you I did not choose him first. He first chose us. He says, uh, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he's going to give you. Wow. So I really want to hook into that last bit because I, I sort of getting a bit impatient and yet having to be patient <laughs> for what God really, really, really wants to do in our city, our region, and our nation. Yeah. 
Because I want to get into that whatever I ask in the name of the Father in my name. That's the name of Jesus we just sang about. That he may give you, give me, give us as the family of God. So I really want to really catch being chosen and appointed. Because it's out of the revelation and out of the understanding that you're chosen, man. My brothers, my sisters, and my brothers and sisters, that you are appointed to something great. That understanding that, having revelation of that, comes this next power that when you pray, when you ask the Father, it happens. Things started to change. Because when you know you're chosen and appointed, this now starts to release the authority, the azusia, the authority and the power by which you've been given by Christ. So chosen and appointed, well, let's dive in. You ready? Let's dive in. Listen to this. God got ahead of you. Thank you, God. He got ahead of you, and God got inside of your heart and soul way before you even knew it. He got in there before you even knew it. He got in your heart. You see, he chose you before you chose him. The only way you were able to choose him is that he got ahead of you and he stirred up your world and he stirred up your thinking and he stirred up your meditations, your pondering. He, he stirred up circumstances around you. He got into you. So you could get into him. I could never have got into God. The sad thing is, I just never wanted to. How ripped off and blind was I? How ripped off and blind are we so often? But you know what? I love this about our God is he got into you, brothers. And he got into you, my sister. And he got into your family. And he got into your circumstances that caused you to be turned to start thinking about God and Jesus and church and, and to come along. And in that him getting into you, I guarantee he used some people. He used some people. God always using his people. God is always using you. God is using his people to get into you, to change your world and to turn it around so that then you have some light to choose him. And then it's on you. And it's on me. Because then you can never stand before God, but oh, I didn't know. There's, it's going to be... Unfortunately, but I got to say, it's going to be horrific on the day of judgment when people say, oh, 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 and try and make some excuses. But God says, I did show you. I dropped some light into you. I dropped something down upon your life. But you chose to go easy street. You chose to take the wide way, the cool way, easy street. And it's led you to this day. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And then to the everlasting fires prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was never prepared for you. Hell doesn't have your name on it. Heaven does. That's choice. That's God protecting and empowering you with personal sovereignty. And yet my personal sovereignty is under his sovereignty. So in some ways, I guess I, ga I gave that up to him. And when I died to myself and I yielded myself to Christ, and yet I still retain that power to choose. For I could not love if I did not have to choose the choice to also hate. Love would never be such a beautiful thing if I didn't have the choice to also hate or reject. So the power of choice is this incredible gift God has given humanity. Oh, I gotta be the light of the world. We as a family of God, we are a whanau, we are a family. We gotta let the world know that Jesus is real. In a day when everyone's standing up with, with this ism and that ism and, and, and where Islam has is, is got a very clear plan to take over the West. I was watching a thing on 
uh, Brazil the other day. And they're not flooding in there. They're not flooding into, you know, places of where it's poverty and third world and all that sort of stuff. Now they're flooding into where there's been blessing. What has been the source, the, the foundation of our blessing has been Jesus Christ. You can't deny it. You might try and put it, you just can't. It's fact. It's there. It's what built our nation great, those principles, those characters. Even if you didn't want to personally follow Jesus, you followed actually the principles and the truths of God's Word. And the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. And when there's a, there is a consensus for that and an honor to it, God blesses, God blesses, God prospers, God prospers. But we're now allowing radical progressives who fully reject Christ, hate Jesus, hate you for what you stand, have no care for your life, weaponize tolerance and weaponize compassion and mercy against the church and against the West. Oh, we need, the, having the love of God is not a feeling, man. Having the love of God produces action. It really does. Having the true love of God, the true love of God produces beautiful action. See, God chose you first before you chose Him. Another verse says, He loved you before you loved Him. Isn't that amazing? How true is that, right? So God got ahead of you, got into your life before you knew it. Listen to this. Out of all the people in your life, out of all the people around you, think about this, out of all the people in your life, even amongst your family, your friends, colleagues at work, etc., God chose you, which means He selected you. It means He handpicked you and said, you're the one. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're the one. You're the one. God selected you. He handpicked you. Just like the coaches would do for the rugby league or the, 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 the rugby game team, the netball team, the basketball team, and they'll go and hand pick the team players. They'll hand pick them because of their skills, their uniqueness, their personality is part of it, the uniqueness of them and their ability, their drive, their discipline. He ha they handpicked them. Well, that's what God did for you. He handpicked the ultimate all-star champion of champions team called you. How amazing. He called you. He chose you. He selected you. He handpicked you. You might never have been handpicked for a team, a group, for this or that. Don't worry about it because I tell you what, God has handpicked you. And when you understand how, how importantly handpicked of God you are and you walk in that, you watch people will start handpicking you for all sorts. Your elevation will go up. You'll pass the ones at school and when you're growing up that were picked before you, I tell you, you'll pass them. You don't worry about if you didn't make the first 15, the Warriors, the All Blacks, the whatever, the basketball team, the, the rowing team, the sailing team, the soccer team, you know, whatever teams are out there. It don't matter because when you're handpicked from God, you're chosen and you're selected and you're now the one that God is. You've been selected to the, the, the team, the family that really matters. You're the royal family, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're the iwi tapu. How beautiful is that? Listen to this in Ephesians 1 verse 4 and 5. It says, just as Christ, He, He chose us, chose you in Him. And it says before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. See, He chose you before the foundations of the world, before the world was even created. God chose you. Before you were ever seed going into an ovary, God already knew you and chose you. He is, a, God is the omniscient God. The word omniscient, omni, means all, everything, everywhere. 
He is the omniscient one. In other words, God knows all things. He has ultimate all knowledge. No other being has that but our God. And in his omniscience, he was able to see. Because you see, if he is omnip- uh, um, omniscient, <laughs> it means he's also all-knowing and, listen, all-seeing. Because you can't choose something unless you see it. When you go to the supermarket, you look and you see what you choose. Seeing precedes knowing. And God saw you before the foundations of the world, before anything was even made, created. He saw you. He saw you and went, Oh, la, 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 la. He saw you and went, wow. He saw you through the annuals and the millenniums of time. Out of all the millions of people, the billions of people that have already gone before us and the millions that will come after us, He already knew you. He had already seen you. And when He saw you, He chose you. He selected you. He handpicked you. Where's all my youth at? Where's the young ones, 18 and younger, 20 and younger? (laughs) Hey, you cheeky fellas. Hey. Oh, the ancient of days stood up, eh? <laughs> They're going grey. They're getting ready to put the, 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 what's the man's hair stuff? Anyway, they're plucking out greys, wearing hats. <laughs> the true sign they haven't embraced growing older. No, I wear hats all the time too. <laughs> He, so he said, you, can, you can't get your groceries without seeing it. You go online to do your groceries sometimes. you got to see it before you purchase it. The Bible says you've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. You've been purchased with the highest price that any person, no other God on the planet in the history of man has ever said, I'll give my son. Uh, blow all the other religions, blow all the other gods. Yeah, I'm going to be honest because how dare they even try and compete with my God. They never gave their son and they never laid their life down to be tortured, murdered and butchered for the people that he so loves. They just all smack talk. That's true. That's fact. Absolutely put Jesus listed, put Muhammad and listed, put Buddha and listed, put Krishna and listed, put every other God, false God beside it, and none of them come anywhere near Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No wonder he has the name above every name. No wonder he is all powerful and by his name you can be healed and by his name you can be saved. By his name when you've got the heebie-jeebies in your house. That we, you've tried everything to get the heebie-jeebie, weebie-deebies out of your house. And they still stay there. But when we turn up and we speak the name of Jesus because of the authority and power that's in his name, delegated to us as his sons, that those demons got to flee. I've gone into many a house where the doors are banging and it's very real. People even share and I think they, they might think I don't believe them. And then I start, yeah, man, I believe you. Yep, not surprised. Yep, 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 yep. This is a Christian, you know, saved people and unsaved people's lives uh, and homes. And you know what? But when we walk in there, whether we're in church, out of church, whatever state it in, whatever even's going on in that home, and when we go into that home, every time I've ever done it, the demonic activity stops, the fear goes out of the house. Why? Because I brought the only name. <laughs> Muhammad can't do it. Krishna can't do it. Any other God of any other culture. Pakia culture, Maori culture, Pacific culture, Japanese culture, American Indian culture, anything. And I'm not putting people down. I'm just declaring what is true in the realm of the gods. 
for there is only one supreme and almighty God. Just think about it, man. He's the only one who gave his son. Whoever else has done that? Nah, zip, didn't happen. He's the one who says, go and bring peace and be peacemakers. Did any of the other do that? Zip, the biggest uh, counterfeit one to Christianity. <laughs> they went, he went and created wars and said, go and have wars. And he says, subdue, kill. If they're not a believer, cut them off, cut their heads off and kill them. Oh, yeah, you want to serve that? We want that in our country? No way. It's already here too much because the church has been so weak and effeminate. Because they've weaponized our tolerance and our compassion. But he chose you. He saw you. How amazing is this? You're the one he wants. You're the one he needs. You're the one he loves. You're the one he's created. In all your incredible, glorious uniqueness. And you know what I love about our God? He never takes away your uniqueness. The last thing God ever wanted was robots all look the same, say the same, have the same haircut, same clothes, same toothbrush, same car. That's not of God. He gave you uniqueness. Now we will become one in our faith, one in Christ, one in our baptism, one with the preached word over the pulpit from His word. We come one with that. We come into agreement with all those things. That's what the Bible, our God, our Christ tells us. But in that, your uniqueness, the more you have that, you know what? The more your uniqueness will flourish. The more your brightness, your color, your flavor, your power, your beauty will actually be seen. Wow, I love that. You see, in Ephesians 1 verse 4, it says this, that second part there of verse 4, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. You know what? I was meditating on that this morning, and I wrote this down. You know, good, God would not say this to us if He couldn't see it being part of our lives as righteous and blameless and holy before Him. He wouldn't. Speak that if he couldn't see it being a reality in us. Because he's the realest one you could ever think of or know. And therefore, he gives us the ability and the tools to be holy and without blame before him in his love. And I love it how he says his love. Because people who get holy and blameless without his love become freaks. Judgmental to the max. Rigid tight like a wound up rubber band. They can't flow. They can't move. They can't be free. You know what? They end up not being able to use by God. Knowledge puffs up, but the Spirit gives life. But my people perish with a lack of knowledge, revelational knowledge. And when you just get caught in holiness and, and being blameless, it'll make you just so rigid that you actually lose the power to become relatable to people. The power to understand people's struggles. It might, their, their struggle might not be real in your life. It's got nothing to do with your life. It's about Christ's life for their life. And a lot of the time we, we, we get too much into our experience to witness to other people. But Christ never sinned. Christ never broke the law. Christ never did dumb stuff. That's why our young people, our youth, you don't have to have a testimony to be reaching other young people in the world just because you haven't been to jail or you weren't a gangster or you didn't smoke dope or you didn't get drunk or you didn't have sex before marriage. That doesn't qualify you. You know what that qualifies you? For hell. <laughs> it's true. All that dumb stuff qualifies you for hell, not only in the future for eternity, but in this life. Go and talk to everyone who's been in that world, and they'll soon tell you the hell it created. So that ain't, that ain't the right picture. I'm just so thankful that God's grace comes and redeems people like you fellas. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lord, for His grace for you, fellas. <laughs> you should be whole. So he, he gives us this ability. Now, first, you've got to understand this, that first of all, you must get this so strong in your life. Otherwise, you're going to be striving with something you won't get there in your own strength. Is you've got to understand you're already made righteous. You know what that means? You've already been made right in Christ. You've been made right in Christ. You've got to understand this. So you're already in Him, holy and blameless. Because you could never be to that standard. The Bible says, for all have sinned, in Romans 6, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fallen short. That means, that word there, short, means you've missed the mark. You never quite got there. And you can't get there. But Jesus got there. He got there for you. He got there for you so you could become holy and blameless in His sight because of Jesus Christ and what He did for you. You are now being made holy, blameless, righteous, made right, justified as if you'd never sinned. You now can live right, live above, live forward. It don't matter about all the dumb mistakes of the past. You confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all your mistakes or dumb stuff, all your wrong fathering, mothering, all your silly words, dumb words. Words, regretful words, regretful actions. He has now moved it out of the way. The Bible says he took all your sins and he removed them as far away as east is from west. That's an unfathomable line. And it says he cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. My God does not have dementia or Alzheimer's. He's got the power to choose. And because it's his love for you, when you asked him to forgive you, he says, Kapai, my brother, it is done. It is done. You're the one. You selected. I knew you would respond. I, I saw it. I saw you way before the foundations of the earth. Oh, I knew what they would call you. I didn't tell them what they should call you. They found out what they should call you. They called you Johnny. Yeah. One of the most famous names in the Western world. <laughs> Maybe not today. Bring back John. They write songs. They have sayings. Johnny be good. Johnny come lately. Johnny rotten. See, everything pins around a Johnny. Even in the Bible, there's a Johnny boy. Beautiful Gospel of John. The Gospel I encourage people to read when they first get saved. John. Not only that, God magnifies and says, we better have one John, two John, three John. Come on, we've got the Holy Trinity of God working the power of John. <laughs> Woo. Hey, if I didn't say it, you never would, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> God knew your name, man. He knew your middle name, or if you don't have one, he knew that too. He knew the color of your hair, the shape of your nose, the color of your skin. He knew your fano. He knew your town. He knew your city. He knew all the crazy. He did, but he sent his son that he would be an intervention into your life, into your world, that he would pull you out of darkness. He would pull you out of the troubles and lift you up. That from you there would become generations that would bow the knee to Jesus Christ, no other foe. You would stand and you would proudly speak the power of His name in your city, over your family and in the streets. The name above every other name, no one else's name can match it. John is so lesser than the name of Jesus Christ. It's pretty good, but... So you've been made right, so you can now learn. Listen, you've been made right, so now you can learn to walk right. Be made right, so you can now learn to walk right. That's why Elder Dear and I were having a chat just before service saying, if there's anything you need weekly is this on a Sunday morning. And all of our programs are, comp are good, but they're complementary to this word. This is the one. 
This is the one you never want to miss out on. This is the one you want to, if you're away on holiday, tune in. If you're sick, tune in. Otherwise, get here. Such a little bit. It's just like easy as to get here. No trouble. I say, wait, and when trouble comes at you, he says, no trouble, I'm going. You do that and troubles on Sundays will go. Distractions will go. Oh, my, my father's in town, my mum's in town, bring them with you. Auntie's in town, best mate, haven't seen for 20 years, wants to connect, only can do it Sunday morning. Beautiful, what a great place to connect and have a coffee. Or say, hey, bro, I've left the, the, the lamb out and the chicken out, or I've put it in. Here's the key, go over home, and I'll be home about quarter past 12, half past 12, and let's have a kai together. Let's have a chat. Let's have a laugh. Let's reminisce. I'll see you after church. But as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. I'm off to church. I'm off to church. I'm off to the house of God. I'm going up, man. I'm, not, I'm going up. The Bible says, let us go up. Let us go up. You're never going down when you go to church. The Bible says in Isaiah, you're going up. Are you ready to go up? Are you ready to go up? There's more levels to go up. There's higher levels. Let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. It's time to go up. It's a new day. This is the season to go up. This is the season God's packing out His house. This is the season God's healing, saving, doing miracles. 30,000 flyers are going to put a message into our region. Our God has taken us up. People out there are going to go up. He's chosen them. He's already in them. He's already working in them. It's a point of connection. Without connection with you, there'll be no connection with God. He needs an instrument. Oh, he's chosen you, you're hand-picked. Woo! Hand-picked. Oh, my Lord Jesus. I love it. How beautiful. How incredible. The second thing about that verse, this is walk before him in love. Walk before him in love. As he loved you, so you must love others. That's a sac- love. God's love, the picture of God's love is sacrificial. Because while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us, revealed and manifested his love. So love, true love is sacrificial. You know as parents that your love is sacrificial because you have to sacrifice stuff so often for children. Be a leader in that, not them, but you. But we do sacrifice for them, right? We sacrifice. We, you know, I say to young couples when they first get married, you know, uh, once you have babies, it changes. Because you're a baby for the, uh, so you're, a, you're a, a parent, a father, a mother for the rest of your life. What a beautiful, that's one of the greatest gifts you can ever have. It's beautiful. But it changes everything, right, parents? Can't just go wherever you want to go because, you know, you can't just leave them at home and you know, those first three, four, five years, you know, first couple, anyway, you know, it's pretty hundy with nights getting up and they get the spews, you get the spews, they get the runs, you get it, you know, you know you're off midnight. Why do kids get sick at midnight? <laughs> hey, what how, how, how can't they do it between Monday and Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m.? <laughs> you ever thought about it? What's up with... What's up? What's programmed to get sick at night? Well, actually, if you start thinking about it, it makes you rethink. Mm. <laughs> Old ugly face is working around my family because it's dearer, so he's robbing money from us. <clears throat> anyway, it's not my message. <laughs> but your love is sacrificial. <laughs> and, of course, we do it happily, right? For our darling babies. You know, walk before him love means as he has been gracious to you, so must you be gracious to others, even when you don't understand it or understand them. If you're not gracious with others, why should God be gracious to you? You you gotta you gotta be gracious. If you're not gracious, levels of graciousness will be held back. I need the grace of God like nothing else. 
And because I've experienced that deep love of God and graciousness is just a fruit of his love, his sacrifice. To be gracious means to be sacrificial. Because you've got to let your opinion go. You've got to let your feelings go. You've got to let your judgment go. And you could be quite right to retaliate or to bark or to tell off. I'm not talking about not leading someone. Absolutely lead. But don't bark. You want me to bark at you? Get in your face? <laughs> Will that help? No, it won't. That's not leadership. leadership. Leadership is gracious, but it's true. It's honest. It's truthful, but honorable to all people, including your children. Don't you dare slap them across the face. Slap them across the face. Let me come and bring 10 of the biggest brothers in here. And we, can we slap your face? Because there's no difference. Because 10 slaps of the... Ten biggest, meanest brothers in here would be the same level as one slap across a child's face. Cut it out. Cut it out. Slap your own face. Slap yourself up the side of the head. That would be a way better thing because it's probably you're half the problem, three quarters of it, maybe all of it. <laughs> Next minute, eh? Half the church comes with a swollen eye and out here, no front teeth. Last I, I slap wasn't hard enough, so I gave myself the old biff. <laughs> Imagine they've got to have healing, eh? The day the hero comes and takes photos and they're all walking on. <laughs> I thought you had a Palangi pasta. Ooh, he's all, he looks more Nigerian now, you know? He's purple black. Yes. Excuse me, I mean, you know, I don't, probably not, I don't mean that in a, anyway, I said it, probably a bit naughty, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm walking in his love, and just a little bit of Johnny gets in there now and then, see, you can be a little bit Johnny come lately, thinks about it after he said it, or Johnny be rotten. But don't judge me, be gracious. As love is, as he has forgiven you, so you must forgive others. And the quicker you can learn to forgive others, the better you're going to be, happy, the more happier you're going to be, the more joy and peace you have in life. Just be quick to forgive. It's just, it, you know, it's, you're not letting them off having to answer for their wrong. That's between them and God. It, forgiveness is just you setting yourself free from their junk and stopping letting them have free rental space in your head. God will still deal with them. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So that's way scarier level than your vengeance. <laughs> Listen to this. You're chosen to be someone very special, not just for your family, it starts there, but for your city and the community that you live in. This is why you're truly chosen, for your family and for your city and the community that you live in. So in John 15, verse 16, it goes on, it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And then it says this amazing word. He says, I appointed you. I love this. God appointed you. He appointed you because when he saw you and knew you by name, the Bible says, he chose you with a purpose in mind. There was a plan attached to you. A destiny to fulfill. That word appointed in the Greek means to place, I love this, to place in an upright, active position. So to be appointed, God has put you, He's positioned you, He's placed you in an upright, not horizontal, not lying down, but an upright and active position. See, God created you, appointed you to be one who would stand. Stand for Christ. Stand for your church. Stand for your family. Stand up for your nation. Stand up for justice and what is right. He, he created you. He pointed you to be one because there's something about you that may be why someone else around you didn't get chosen. And you might not look that choosable. But he can see something more where others can't. So I only see gold. I see gold, I see potential, I see ability, but I can't let the potential stay within. I got to get your potential out today. I got to pull out the leader within you that will stand and go up levels and be the incredible 
out the gate person he created you to be. He, so he appointed you, he placed you in an upright and active position. You know how he, what he does with that? He, he placed you in an upright and active position. And listen to this, in the uniqueness of your personality. I love that. You know, one of the biggest things that causes people to leave church is you don't get each other's uniqueness of their personality. You don't get it. You got to learn the art and the power of understanding different personalities. Because if you don't learn the art and the power of different personalities, you're going to be someone who's offended and you will put posts in the ground. <laughs> Don't you come near me anymore. And without even saying things, the vibe coming off you will push them away because you haven't understood the uniqueness and the beauty of their personality. And when you do that, you are actually offending God. And I don't want to be offending God because I don't like something about their personality. I don't like something about their mannerisms. If it upsets you, get rid of your upset. So you can go up. Because if you get upset, it means it's been an upheaval because of that brother, sister, person. And it's, you're upset, so there's an upheaval, the up bit, the second part of that. Is that, that's one word, A, eh? upset, A. Eh? Yep, so the second syllable, is that right, Ellie? My family, if I say a big word, they straight away say, how many syllables? And they've had just mock years of laughter over me working out syllables. But I'm getting better, getting pretty good now. So the first syllable is up, upheaval, you get all uppity. Heard the saying, uppity, you uppity little person. You're uppity, you're up. What's the second syllable? Set. So it sets you, concretes you, freezes you. Because you got uppity and you got set. And it might be like that, it might be like that, it might be, you know, like doing something real ugly to somebody, you know. And, and you're, you're now set. You're concreted. You're shaped now to continue walking in that way until you forgive. And the power of forgiveness I've learned is learning the art of personality and understanding it. So I saw Nestor and I, I understand he's, he's unique. He's not me and I'm not him. So I, I'm looking for the power of him to come out. I'm looking for what that, how that will help me be a better person. Because God, you think if God is sovereign, omniscient, omnipotent, and the other one, I can't, off my mind, there's actually seven omnis of God. I'm not clever enough to remember them all. But if, if I understand that, do you think God's made a mistake in adding people in here? Do you think God has made a mistake with all the different personalities? And of course, we have flawed personalities, but it's not. But you need to understand people's flaws. Easy to understand, oh, Pastor John's loving and gracious. Well, I've got flaws. So how are you going to be with me when you see my flaws? Are you going to floor me? Because <laughs> that's what people do with flaws. They floor people. They push them aside as if they're a bit of dirt on the floor. They floor people to the point where people want to punch them in the head to knock them down and floor them. So what are you going to do with your brother and sister's flaws? Are you going to be gracious and forgiving? Are you going to start to learn, man, I need to understand that personality type. I need to understand why that flaw's there. Because if I understood it, my compassion and love for that person will go through the roof. So I can, I can see the gold in Bronson. And so if a flaw comes out because I'm gracious and I've, I've, I've trained myself to be first gracious and loving, I can actually now step into that, understanding the person he is. And I actually understand a lot of his, 
proclivities because as I've got to know him more. So I understand his proclivities. Some of them are good and maybe some are not so good. But I understand why he's got some not so good ones. So I don't judge him because there's not so good ones. That's just his human experience. And so now I want to step into his world and help him out of the, the flaws and not floor him, but elevate him. And if he does something that I don't like or agree with, I'm not going to get upset and upheaval that then. Because then whenever I see him, I could be with late and I could be all happy. Hey, my brother, you're doing awesome. You're a dude. You're awesome. Da, 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 talking, laughing. But then, <coughs> excuse me, our brother Bronson walks in because I have had an upheaval a month ago, a week ago, a day ago, 20, 30, 50 years ago. And I haven't done, dealt with my upheaval with my brother that is only one minute little piece that even God ain't too worried about it because he still saved him, still loves him, still believes him. But you and I, we're in an upheaval that's been... Set. And because you're upset, you really become a jerk to the, your brothers and sisters. And you offend them, and then they get up, evil, set with you. What does that create? It creates a war. You've created a war in the church. You've created a war within four walls. Stop it. Cut it out. Cut it off. Get rid of it. It's just, and it's okay because we've all been here. Me too. But now I've got the power of sovereignty under his sovereignty to choose to be gracious and forgive. It's okay. I love you. I've forgiven you. And he says, oh, oh I'm sorry, John, or sorry, Pastor, whatever. You know, more than forgiven. More than forgiven. Already forgiven. Kapai. Who am I to judge you, bro? I've got flaws too. But I'm not going to let it floor me. We don't quit. We don't give up. We just go to Christ and just own it. And if we've said a dumb thing or done a dumb expression, we say sorry. Now, if the person doesn't know that you, you've had bad thoughts, don't go and tell them, I've had five years of ugly thoughts. I wanted to murder you. I hated you every time I saw one. Don't go and tell them that because they probably thought you were just beautiful and loving because you've put on your little Christian face. Brother, sister. <laughs> you know so they so that's a dumb thing you, you, and you don't need to but if you gave them the fingers said something nasty you gossiped about them and it got back to them you need to definitely go and say oh bro I take all of that back and I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm you know I'm just under construction and I own that and and I just want to affirm you and I need you in my life because the ones that offend you the ones you need the most The ones that rip your undies and put your jocks in a knot and whatever else little sayings we might have, they are the ones you need the most. In fact, if you deal well with that, I guarantee, and you both do well, I guarantee they'll become actually a lifetime friend. And a lot of people wonder why they don't have lifelong friends. Sometimes we just don't know how to deal with conflict. Now, you live at peace where possible. If they don't want to, kapai, at least I'm free. If they don't want to be a friend or be at peace with me, kapai, that's not my problem. I'm, I'm not going to stay in a set place of upheaval. Wow. What beautiful revelation. That was not in my message. <laughs> None of that. I hadn't even thought about it. So that's download. That's God talking to you. Because we live in a time that we need the unity and the power. Because... Because there's so many people depending on us that God's already chosen. He appointed you. He appointed you to a place. It's a place of habitation that you can call this place home. He places you. He positions you. So in this, you have your own expression. There'll be a way about you that's unique and powerful. And I embrace your uniqueness. And God will take the flaws out of us all because we're all under construction. And if you're listening to the word, these things will get out of you. They really will, man. If you really honestly take it on 
write down a couple of scriptures or if you, I say a saying or we have stuff on this so you can click it with your phones, which is a good modern way of getting it to make it simple. Man, click some of those sayings and print them off and put them on your fridge or something or, or you know, put them on your screensaver on your, I have the one, you know, over here, the, a bit of artwork with the huya feather there. I have that as my wallpaper on my phone because I love it. Christ, family, army, people. It's lovely to look at. It reminds me what I'm about. You know, these things help us. Listen, he unites us all in his church, our place of fellowship that's purposely designed to keep us active and upright. If you want to stay active and upright in your position, because that's what appointed means, this is why I got to labor on it a little bit, is um, you need the church. You need this fellowship, good days, bad days. If we're going through some tough seasons and we've just gone through some real tough seasons, we really have, but see what's, how we're popping out now? So many amazing things are happening every week, every day. There's amazing things happening. There's people getting saved. We had eight brothers give their lives to Christ yesterday. You know? There's some brothers here today because of it. And there's many others, and we'll see more of them because they've started this journey of finding Christ and finding His church and being added to it. We need this. You see, it says in 1 John 1 verse 3, it says that that which we have seen and heard about, this is about Christ, the apostles, it says, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, or with one and another, it says in another version, it says with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 7, it says this, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light and we have fellowship. See, you've got to be walking in the light of the preached Word. Remember, they didn't have the written Word when this was all being said. They had a few letters from the apostles. That's all the church had. So they were going on what was getting preached from their pulpits because it was light. And as they walked in the light, as he is in the light, and as they walked in the light, and, and, and they had fellowship with one another, hang out with one another, didn't, in the upheavals, they didn't get upset, up, set, stuck, frozen, a statue, until you thaw out through graciousness and forgiveness. He says, you've got to walk, and you've got to have fellowship with one another. And here, here's the power in, in, in this. It says, and as you have fellowship with one another, and then it says, and, and then, it's like, and then the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son cleanses us from all sin. So I, I understood this from a young age as a Christian. I needed the church to keep walking in the forgiveness and the cleansing of the blood of Christ for my sins. God attached your forgiveness to His church. God attached His forgiveness to you being in fellowship, hanging out, not getting upset in the upheavals but learning how to be gracious and forgiving so that no matter who walks in the door and God's adds, you get that type of person. You start to learn personality types. You start to learn the difference between extroverts, introverts. This is why I put all that practical stuff in, the, in our programs. You, know, you, you learn that that's a flaw, cup I. I've got flaws too. Are you, any of you without sin here? Let him cast this first stone. Some people think they're David running around and their brothers and sisters are Goliath. Silly person, you're on the wrong battlefield. They're not your Goliath. They're not your enemy. They're your friend. Your wife is not your Goliath. Amen, she was saying. Right, she said. Your husband is not your Goliath. He might be big, ugly, brute, and everything else that's foul, but he ain't your Goliath. If anything, the Goliath's within us half the time. <laughs> Come on, someone say, hey, man, hallelujah. Someone say, I'm embracing the pain, pastor. <laughs> you see, isn't that amazing? Listen to this. Chosen and appointed means you've been predestined to be here in this place with all the upheavals, with all the upheavals, but I refuse to be up. I refuse to be up. I refuse to be, oh, come on all of us now, I refuse to be, Upset. one more time, I refuse to be, Upset. nice, wow, I refuse to be upset, 
Because mm. upset is your choice, upheavals is life. Upheavals is out of the realm of your choice most of the time. But upset, that's all on you, all on Johnny boy. And that'll turn you into Johnny be good or Johnny be lately or Johnny, Johnny run away or Johnny come lately or Johnny this or Johnny that or whatever. You'll be really in trouble. <laughs> Listen to this. Um, um, oh, he's finishing up. Chosen and appointed. You've been predestined. should be up on the screen. To be here in this place, made upright through Christ and positioned to be active in his house and purpose. Oh, active now. So you're not just appointed to be upright, free, but now you've been appointed to be active. Have I got some action men, some action women? Have I got some action youth? Come on. Have I got so is there one young person in here that's gonna be an action man, an action woman? Not all you oldies. <laughs> but hey, you grab it too. That's you did the right thing. <laughs> You've been called to be active in his house and purpose. Listen to this. Having, <clears throat> having predestined us, this is Ephesians 1, 5. It says, having predestined us, pre-planned, pre-purposed, us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You know, it's God, God's pleasure to do this for you. You know, doing, appointing you is his pleasure. This is his pleasure and will. Predestined means he's predetermined you, prearranged you according to the good pleasure of his will. It's just a pleasure. You're a pleasure. Turn around to the person and say, you're a pleasure in God's eyes. You're a pleasure in God's eyes. Yep. You're a, thank you. I receive that. I receive. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was felt nice. I'm a pleasure. <laughs> Beautiful. John 15, verse 16, it goes on to say, this is our main text, says, he has appointed you that you should then go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Go and bear fruit, active. We've got to become active in bearing fruit. I've got to shift you. This is leadership now. This is going, but you could even make this as part three of the leader within you sort of series, really you know, being a bold leader for Christ, this is leadership now, is I've got to activate you to a place where you start to bear fruit more and that your fruit remains. That's leadership. Only you can do that. God can't do that for you. He empowers you, but He can't do it for you. Now listen, this is the first level of fruit. This is for all of us. Well, both of these levels are for all of us, one billion percent. One is not bigger or better than the other. They go together. But the first level of fruit is this, the fruits of the Spirit the fruits of Christ within you. Just you getting this, and that what's that? Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23, it'll come up on the screen. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long, oh, stop it, please, Lord, long suffering at times, only seasons. Remember, everything in life, God sets up times and seasons, the Bible says. Time speaks of years, Seasons, thank you, Jesus, speaks of months. We have three seasons, speaks of months. So times, God sets up as years, and then seasons are times. So there will be seasons, not times, where you're going to have to really dig into the fruit of the Spirit to help you with long, 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 long suffering. Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness. That's good. Good one, brothers. You know, the Bible says of David, the greatest warrior known to man, killed giants, slaughtered thousands, you know, just an absolute warrior machine. It says, gentleness, he said, has made me great. What a beautiful attribute of a real beautiful man. That's the type of man I want to be. That's the warrior, warrior in the garden. But when I need to step into a war, the beast comes out. But otherwise, gentle. It means self-control. Oh, Lord, help us there. Against such there is no law. You'll break no law known to man. So what does that do? That first level of fruit is the fruits of the Spirit. And what does it produce? Those fruits produce character. Godly character. And it causes you to do well in life. 
and prospering in life. And listen, it will cause you to do well in prospering in your marriage, in your family, in your finances, in your ministry, in your relationships, and it will grow the leader within you. How awesome is that? It'll grow the leader within you. It'll take the potential that is only ever potential until you let it out and manifest it. The second level of fruit is this, and that this will be a natural, you don't even have to think about it. If you've got that happening in you, this will automatically ha happen. It'll follow you. It'll be an outcome from your life. But let's just for learning, is a second level is this, being part of, of saving souls and seeing them planted and growing in Christ. Being part of. Because I have learned the difference of personalities. Not everyone is that out, out there soul winner. And not everyone is just is, um, that incredible gift of helps and all the other. So I've learned to discern who are the, the direct soul winners who are the incredible administrators, helpers, uh, servers, leaders, all the, I've got time to talk all about that, but all the aspects of that, that when God puts us together, it's not about one, it's about team. And there's no I in team. We're a team. So I need the soul winners, I need the planters, I need the waterers, I need the helpers, I need the carers, I need this, I need the ones who stack chairs, I need ones who car park, I need ones who do children's youth, or I need everyone, all their unique personalities. Now remember, God appoints you, He gives you a personality, and the personality will match your gifting your anointing, and your call. Now, I can go and operate in all sorts of areas, but I really want myself and you truly mainly operating in your what fits with your personality, with your call, therefore with your giftings and anointings. That's why if you get upset, you will shut your fruitfulness down. If you get jealous... You'll, up, you'll get, what does it do? Upset. If you get envious, you'll get upset. If you get covetous, you'll get upset. If you think something should be just done this way and it's the only way, you've set yourself up to 100% get upset. And I'd probably be the one who'll do it. Because I say, okay, we did that, now we're going to go this way. But I love that about Apostle. I love that, that, you know, about being of the wind, of the spirit. We've got to flow, we've got to be flexible. Like I've taught, you know, about the palm trees, different to an oak tree. An oak tree I'm planted, but to be maneuvering, operating in life, I've got to be a palm tree. Fle more flexible. Oak trees in a hurricane, they get snapped. Palm trees, generally speaking, have a tendency to flow with the wind. So this is so important for the leader within you. I want to be free of becoming set in the upheavals of life or the upheavals of personalities, the upheavals of dumb things or silly things. Amen? Amen? Listen to this. Where you are appointed, you are anointed. So you've got to understand you're appointed to this place, to this generation, to this city, to this region. So you're appointed. Therefore, there's an anointing for it. Now, that's the supernatural getting on your natural. That's the God factor getting on your personality. Your personality is beautiful. Yeah, it might have some flaws. God will pull out the flaws. You might not get rid of all of them in your lifetime. Let's just try and help not to put them into our children by dealing with it, owning it, and carrying on, right? So, so he anoints you as a personality, as a person, a personality that's unique, that's got a gift that's unique to you, and it's expression will be different. So then we could take Elder Shannon Bex, the gifted and called in worship and music and teaching too, by the way. And yet they have a different flow. It's similar as a one and a similar, but there's uniqueness from Elder Shannon to Elder Bex. You, you know? And so you've got to start to understand. If you don't understand it, one of my elders, leaders, facilitators, you are setting yourself to get up upset. 
people get upset with our apostle, they get up and then they get set because something caused some upheaval and they don't like it, so they blame the personality. But if they realize it's a gift, embrace it, let it work in you what it needs to work. And if it's not working, it's all good. Don't worry about it. If it doesn't fit you, don't worry about it. See how free that is? So anointing, you have an anointing, you have a heavenly endowment for your unique gift and ability. I love this. I love this. I want uniqueness to flow away because it's creative, it's powerful, it's enjoyable. I want your uniqueness, your creativity. That's why we've got to handle the upheavals so we don't get upset and locks down your personality. It's your personality that actually releases the gift and the blessing of God through you. You need God needs your personality, man. Do you know what? Demons know this very much. He wants your personality too, and he'll warp it. Listen, it's teamwork of unique, unique personalities and talents should come up on the screen. It's the teamwork of unique personalities and talents all working together for the common person of God. And you know what? That is when our fruit remains. And in Corinthians, it says, our fruit, everyone, myself included, everyone was known as exempt, will be tested by fire to see if it remains. And he said, he will test it by fire, your fruit. And Jesus said, remember, he, your fruit that will remain if you abide in me and I in you and you uh, understand you're chosen and appointed. He says, your fruit will remain. He says, I will test it by fire to see if it's wood, chaff, or straw, or will it come out as gold, silver, and precious stones that the fire just makes it better, purifies it, and makes it shinier. And none of us are exempt from that. I embraced that through COVID because I realized maybe there's some areas we're building with chafe, wood, and straw because they got destroyed. I lost some fruit. But then other fruit got stronger and brighter that's here. And now we're seeing, we've been waiting for the season to hit again of, of growth and of harvest and of multiple breakthroughs without us even being that involved in it. It had to come. We had to be seasoned to come into the bigger, greater things of God. How do you do? You've got to embrace the pain. You've got to embrace the challenges. You've got to embrace everything. Not be up, set, but walk and move through it. So now your fruit remains. Now that's talking about generations. The fruit that remains. We have set this up. I was sent here to be a transgenerational, going from generation to generation. It's transgenerational. It's transformative generation that goes from generation to generation. So I have done things purely with a long time of seeing forward and yet working in today. Amen? So we've got to be active. We've got to be active. Let's finish with this verse. Joshua 24 is 15. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served. I don't want to serve the gods of Trevor. Bless him. Love my dad. Didn't know him, but I love him. And I'm just gracious and forgiving. I don't want to be upset by my father's mistakes. So I'm not living under the gods of my fathers, my forefathers, my tupuna, my ancestors. I am not living under... Their gods that were on the other side of the river, for I have crossed the Jordan. I've crossed the river of life to the river of life. And I will not serve the, the gods of the Amorites, the other gods of the land in whose land we dwell. But as for me and my house, that's my unique family house. It's a blended house. It's a beautiful house, my own family. And my house is the house of Destiny Hamilton and Destiny International because they're not separated either of those two either. But as for me and my house, stand to your feet. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord no matter the upheavals. We will serve the Lord. Amen. For He is the champion. Wow. 
you know, I got to do this because it's just the season and I just want to do it no matter what. But if you're here today and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ and you want to give yourself to my Lord and He can be your Lord and He wants to be because He's got so much good and blessing for you. If that's you today and you'd like that, please pray this prayer right now. Please pray this prayer from your heart, man, because I tell you, He knew you'd do it. He knew you'd do it. That's why He chose you. If that's you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And brothers and sisters, let's pray with our new brother and sister. Pray it like this. Dear Jesus, I ask today for you to come into my heart and life to be my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me for all my wrongs and dumb stuff. I'm truly sorry. Please now empower me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for a new beginning, a new adventure. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him a bit of a praise for that. Before we go, if you prayed that today for the first time or you've been away from God for ages or something, you're praying it because you're coming back, just raise your hand to me right now. If anyone prayed that first time, oh, bless you, my sister. Bless you. Beautiful. Anybody else today? Anybody else? Just want to just wanna check. Oh, bless you, my brother. Beautiful. Awesome. Bless you, bro, bro. Fantastic. Anybody else? Fantastic. Anybody else? Fantastic. Hey, before we go, can I just grab those three people who, who just put their hand up? And I'd just love to pray. Ali and I would just love to pray a blessing on you. Is that okay? So could you just come right now? Can, let's give those three people a big hand. Is that okay? Come with a friend. Come with my brother, my two brothers, my lovely sister here. Yeah, come on. Let's give them a big hand. Yeah. Bless you, my brothers. Good to see you again. See you next week. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Let's just pray for these, this beautiful sister. Oh, bless you, sister.